faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's It's time for Superwomen Live. Get around the Vixens. What a victory it was. 48-40 to 40 against the Adelaide Thunderbirds. Uh, thanks very much, of course, to Jason's Betting, uh, proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens Premier Partner. That is uh, Jason Betting, uh, helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. And uh, they'll be doing that uh, all year round. But, of course, the bye for the Vixens next week, and they go in with a win. Uh, it was absolutely going gangbusters, of course, at High Sense Arena today. The roof uh, almost came off. It was uh, The atmosphere was just terrific. And the Vixens uh, credit the crowd for almost all, of course, of that second half, ripping second half. And uh, the Melbourne Vixens have only one home game left for the season against West Coast Fever on 17th of June. So make sure you catch the Superwomen on home soil. And I give them a huge send-off uh, before they head off to New Zealand for the last two rounds. Purchase your tickets through Ticketek now to secure your spot in the action. We've got five double passes to give away to the Vixens vs. Fever game on the 20th of May. So the best SMS is 0433 11 16. They're streaming through a huge show to come. We've got Vixens vice captain and absolute star Madison Brown to come. Casey Stanaway too is on the Vixens list and also an absolute star with the Victorian Fury in the Australian National League as well. But let's kick it off too uh, with a very special guest. Right now on Superwomen Live, we're joined by Eloise Southby Halbish, of course, Vixen's assistant coach and former Diamond Star. How are you, Eloise? Yeah, good, thanks. I'm uh, feeling great now to come away with a good win today um, over the Thunderbirds. As you said, a great win for the Vixens today, 48-40 to 40 after being down 22-16 to 16 at one stage, I think. It must be a great feeling, as you said, and a relief to bounce back with a win today after a few losses. Yeah, well, we've had three losses on the trot at home. So today was one of those days where the girls had to find something within themselves and dig deep and um, wasn't pretty early. We certainly had very patchy and scrappy netball early in the game, but to come home in the second half and win the way we did, we really just crushed them um, in that second half. So very pleasing from the coaches' um, side of things and the coaching person, I was all very happy at the end of the game. What are some of the things that you'd have been working on or, or felt the team needed to work on to arrest the slight form slump? Uh, yeah, well, over the last um, few weeks, it wasn't... We were never in a position where we thought, wow, what a team, you know, they're unstoppable. And generally, when we looked at um, what we'd been doing, um, it was our bad errors, our bad passing, our drop balls. So our hands and things were, were not good. And then we were looking at our centre pass conversion. So we were hitting that. Normally, we aim for about you know 80% success rate of a centre pass going through to a shot. We're only getting sort of your 50, 58% mark. So we knew that our centre pass passage weren't as effective as they should have been so we really had to fix that and we didn't do that early today but towards the end of the match we were certainly hitting our targets which is um, great and hopefully we can keep carrying that form on. Yeah things hadn't been exactly where you would have wanted them the past couple of weeks but as you said the ball movement was back to somewhere near its best today. It was, yeah, particularly in the second half. I'm sure the crowd were just thinking, what were we doing in that first out half? And, you know, the other point is, what an amazing crowd. Like, over 9,000 people there in that stadium today, and they were very one-eyed, which certainly helped us all um, get over the Thunderbirds. But, um, yeah, certainly we, we were very patchy over the last few weeks, so we really tried to, to fix that up and the error rate, um, certainly the slick ball movement and some beautiful feeds um, from Madison Brown. And I thought Sarah Wall really injected some pay and speed into that attack end and opened it up nicely. So, yeah, I was extremely pleased in that in the last little bit there. Yeah, this was easily the side's most comprehensive home win for the season. We saw the Vixen steamroll quite a few sides away from home to kickstart the year. Why do you think sometimes it can be easy to play your best netball away from home? Is it the pressure of expectation? We know the Vixens, as you said, the fans go absolutely wild and it's a terrific atmosphere at High Sense Arena. It's funny how sometimes it can, for whatever reason, take a little while for things to get going in front of the home crowd. Yeah, well, I suppose when you go away, like we depart the day before, so we have a great preparation. We leave early the day before, we get arrived, we get settled into the hotel, we train in the afternoon, we have no distractions the night before, we get up, we have team breakfast, sort of a bit of a walk and a stretch and then head to the court to play. So when you're away, you've got nothing else 
you know, generally it's you, you're focused on your own game, your own performance, the team. When you're at home, you may have things that you're doing with family or friends the day before. And as much as you try and block all that out as an athlete, you know, certainly being in your home environment does come with added pressure. And I just think it's like the whole tickets and everything that goes with it, like organising yeah. people there and you know, I'm sure people don't realise, but, you know, they can ring you and say, oh, I can't find my tickets or, and then that's just added stress. So um, as much as an, as an athlete you try and block that out, I, I sometimes feel, yeah, the home, it, there is a bit more pressure, but it's more just from outside influences, whereas when you're on the road, it's away and you, you're just really solely focused on yourself and the group. So we kind of like that travelling away. We've got no qualms in travelling away, and um, that was a real positive start for our season, having all the away trips early. Um, and then, yeah, just finding our at home I suppose it's, we were just obviously really wanting to get a win because we know the crowd's been so good here we've had a number of really top selling crowds which is great for Netball Victoria and today was just sensational because I really felt that that crowd got behind us and got us the win. I must say Eloise too uh, home or away you really match up well with the Thunderbirds. <laughs> You know, I know, and the, I mean, you have a look at the season um, and how it sits. You know, there's some teams beating one team and seem to have a voodoo on that team, and then other people, you know, that you don't expect them to beat, they get beaten. So, um, you know, it's it's really a tough season, um, and anyone can win on the day. You've just got to put the performances there, and we're just. I've been really wrapped that against the Thunderbirds on two occasions now, we've really stepped it up, and um, you know, I think they they would go home pretty shattered having a having a six goal lead into half time and then for us to turn it around like we did was pretty amazing we're chatting to vixen's assistant coach and former gun diamond of course Eloise southby helbish and you must have been really pleased here on super women live with uh, kate beverage of course uh, shooting at 81 percent taking call ball at 75 percent and karen holworth too has come on a fair bit and uh, done a great job yeah, look, I was extremely, uh, you know, pleased with Kate Beveridge today. For me, she was our standout, you know, attacking player. And, you know, she stood up and finished off with some beautiful long-range shots when the team really needed it. And that's, you know, basically what we're in need of our goal shooter. And she has worked tirelessly and has would been doing extra sessions and really focusing on a lot of things that she's had to do to get herself right and to be up to full pace. And look, I just hope that this is a big uh, springboard to even better stuff because I thought she played well, but I know in, in her she can even give even more, which would be absolutely scary for any opposition if she puts it together. Um, just watch this space. So she was great today, but um, as a goaling coach, I, you know, I kept always pushing her for more because I know she's got it. A couple of things before I let you go too, Aloise. So what are your thoughts, I have to ask you, on the lifting or chair lifting or hoisting or whatever it's called? Do you think it should be stamped out of the game and outlawed or do you think it should be able to run its course? Oh, look, I, I think it's a tactic. As I said, it, a lot of people in the media have discussed it. First used in the 1970s. Um, Singapore used it last year um, in the World Championships. Very short players for Singapore and were playing against a very tall Sri Lankan goal shooter and needed to hoist themselves up. So it's not the first time anyone's seen it. And I can remember playing in the Diamonds and the girls used to practice it there just as sort of, well, we never know when you might need to pull this out. So when the Mystics use it, it was really the shock factor of it. And now that I think think that it's been used. A lot of um, the attackers are either working out to, to block that move or be smart enough to flick the ball out and, and pass to the free goaler because obviously the two defenders are standing pretty close together. So I've got no problem with it. If a team wants to set it up, that's fine. My only concern is maybe juniors. I don't want to see young kids on a Saturday morning on concrete being thrown up in the air you know, into <laughs> some disastrous effects that could occur there. So I would like to see that you know, we don't encourage our young kids to actually... We don't actually encourage our young kids to go and do that. We, that's my son, sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, in the game, if, if people want to do it and do it well, like Harrison did it well, and good on her. It was a great talking point for our sport. Well, just quickly, Eloise, I know you're under duress <laughs> then uh, at the moment. I heard your father, Jeff, Jeff Southby, of course, uh, recently on SEN saying how much you were enjoying life as an assistant coach at the Vixens. And when you're down, say, 22 to 16 in a game like today, do you just wish you could get out there and do something about it sometimes? Oh, do I ever. The last few weeks I've been saying, where's the dress? Where's the dress? <laughs> 
Um, and so I'm seeing right next to Simone McInnes, my old captain. So, um, and she was, you know, the world's best wing defence as well. So we've both been sitting there, and yeah, we do have the itch to play. But you know, I'm definitely not going back there. And um, it's it's really nice to be in a role where you're hands on with the girls now, and you can they've got a bit of an affiliation with you because um, you know you might I haven't played alongside some of them. Some of them I have, and some of them I haven't. But you know, to know I've been there in the tough sort of situations and won nationally premierships, you know, I know what it takes to sort of do that work and somehow trying to instill in them that confidence and that belief and that knowledge of this is what you do in this situation. So hopefully I'm giving something back and um, they're learning it all the time and, you know, it's just been a fantastic opportunity for me to come on board and I've loved working with Julie Hornweg. Well, it's just fantastic to see the Vixens get the season back on track in such style today and now we're right back up the top where we belong. Thanks very much for joining us, Eloise. Thank you. Aloise Southby Halbish there, of course, an absolute gun diamond in her day. And uh, now the Vixens assistant coach. And uh, what a win, as we said. The Vixens winning 48 to 40 against the Thunderbirds at High Sense Arena. And Danielle on the SMS 04 33 98 11 16 says Kate was amazing today, her best game of the season. And Danielle, uh, you've got a double pass too to the Vixens' next home game on the 20th of May against the Fever. So give us a call 9429 11 16 and we'll get your details there. Benny and Hillside too. Benny Carbonaro, our netball maestro, number one ticket holder at the, the Vixens there. Remember the good old days when Stanners was playing for the AAS uh, Canberra Darters, so Benny from Hillside. And, uh, yes, Benny, uh, Casey Stanaway coming up on the show very, very soon. Uh, Benny in Hillside also says Sarah Wall coming on at centre was a masterstroke from Vixens coaching staff, and her work with Brown during the second half was great. It certainly was another star, was uh, this, uh, of course, absolute star, Madison Brown, and we're about to hear from her, uh, Vixens' vice-captain. And also uh, absolute jet. And Nepal Victoria invites you to a No Limits Leadership Breakfast with guest presenter Carol Fox. Join other leaders within Nepal in your community in this relaxed, informative and fun breakfast. Events in Geelong, Melbourne and Traralgon in June. Go to netballvic.com.au for more info and to purchase tickets. You listen to Super Women Live, proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens Premier Partner, Jason Betting helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. Right now on Super Women Live, we're joined by Vixens Vice Captain and Superstar, Madison Brand. How are you, Maddie? I'm good, thank you. Always good after a win. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A magnificent win, 48-40 uh, to 40 for the Vixens against the Thunderbirds today after being down by six at one stage, I think. So it must be a great feeling and a real relief to, to bounce back with a win today after a few losses. Oh, definitely. I mean, I think it actually got out to eight at one stage and um, it was definitely a game of two halves. We didn't play well for the whole four quarters and consistent netball that we would have liked. But, um, you know, after half time, we got together in the change rooms and, and came out and, and showed that passion and spirit that the Vixens usually do against the Adelaide Thunderbirds. And, um, yeah, we just played our own style of netball. And finally, as we said, after a couple of losses in the last couple of rounds, it was great to get that win and, and have that... Um, but I don't know, that patience and the, the game that we want to play back. Yeah, gee whiz, you love playing the Thunderbirds, don't you? Yeah, I know. Uh, we obviously had a really good win against them in round three. And, and then obviously we knew it was going to be a tough. They were coming off their break and would be nice and fresh. So, yeah, there's something about them that we do really, really well. And it's always a, a dog-eat-dog type of game. And, and the one thing today that stood out to me was how well you moved the ball to. The ball movement was really back to its best. Oh, I definitely. I mean, I think that's what we lacked in the, the first half. And we were just really calm and patient and just really controlled in our ball movement. And we've been working on our ball speed to try and make sure that we get the opposition's head moving and capitalise on every opportunity we got. And I think we just got so many turnovers that we actually, you know, scored off and put that pressure back on them. But the third quarter was an amazing turnaround to be six down and then two up leading into the final quarter was a, was a great start for us and we just kept building from there. Was that similar too to a practice match against the Thunderbirds too where you were a fair way down and then absolutely steamrolled them? Yeah, well, actually, I think it was the other way around. When we played them a week out before the season started, um, we played them in Bendigo for a, a, just a country weekend. We were up there, and, yeah, we had, we had a lead by about eight goals in the first quarter, and then they came over and steamrolled us. So it was lovely to be on the other end of it this time. Absolutely. Easily the, the side's best home win of the season, and 
well, as you said, you started the year with those great away wins, uh, swashbuckling wins, and then sometimes at home it takes a little while for things to get going in front of the home crowd. Do you sort of feel, obviously, a ripping atmosphere with the Vixens fans uh, going absolutely wild and uh, at High Sense Arena there? Is there a bit of pressure of expectation, or can you put a finger on sometimes why the, the home form uh, isn't exactly the same as some of the away wins? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone said it was a nightmare of a start to the season with the, you know, the first few away. But I don't know. I think we, we're such a great group of girls and we love spending time with each other. I think actually being away and, you know, not being forced, but just enjoying each other's company really helped at the start. And obviously when you get home and you're back into your own households and into your own habits and things like that, we may have lost a little bit of that, bit of that touch. But during the week, we went and did a really... Um, fun but tough session out at Craig Harper's, a bit of boxing and a bit of team building and laughing and things like that. And then we went out for dinner to Chelsea Trigger's parents' place and they put on a lovely meal. So I think just having that, you know, feel of unity back within the group and loving spending time with one another really helped this week. And I mean, as you said, the crowd was awesome. I think there was over 7,000 people there. So it was a great win and they definitely helped us get there in the end. And it was great to see, too, in the second half, Kate Beveridge, uh, 29 out of 36. Shooting statistics, of course, uh, 81%. Co- Tegan Caldwell uh, at 75%. And Karen Horth has come on a fair bit and, and done a magnificent job. Oh, Kate Beveridge was a superstar today. She really stood up and showed why she is that most experienced goal shooter down there. And she was just slotting them in from anywhere. And it's, you know, she's not one of those vocal players that tries to rev everyone up. She just shows it through her actions. And today I thought she really stood up and, and she was part, like definitely part of the, the reason we, we got the win and, and the difference from the last few weeks. And you've been absolutely blitzing it yourself there at Madison. We're chatting to Madison Brown, of course, Vixen's vice captain, an absolute superstar. How have you assessed your own form? Oh, but today was just a great team effort. I think, um, you know, when, you, when you're when you playing your role and you know that everyone else has got your back and they're doing the absolute most that they possibly can for the team, it's a lot easier to play rather than slogging it out when, you know, maybe one or two of us aren't quite following the, the strategies that we want to play. But, um, yeah, no, I'm just happy to be out there and playing my role for the Vixens. And I guess hopefully I got that job done today and it helped us get the win. I was talking to Eloise Southby Halbish off air before, and she said, make sure you talk to Maddie about her terrific second half. So you're being a bit <laughs> modest there. <laughs> oh, well, she she definitely gave us the rev up at half time because, you know, I was fantastic in pointing the finger and saying, hey, you need to step up. And sometimes that's exactly what you need. You need the honest truth. And she's been a fantastic addition to our coaching staff and um, provides a lot of motivation to us. So she definitely helped us um, inspire us in that last half. And, um, yeah, we came out in that third quarter. Everyone was like, what was set in the rooms at half time? And we were like, that's for us to know and you to you to find out or make up yourself. <laughs> Just before we let you go to... Uh... Maddie, a hot topic in netball, of course, has been the lifting or the chair lifting or the hoisting or whatever they call it uh, these days. Do you think it should be uh, stamped out of the game or do you think uh, it should be able to run its natural course and you know people can sort of tactically work around it? Well, to be honest, I know, I know I think I was probably more frustrated when it happened because it was against us and because we lost when the Mystics pulled it out. But, I mean, looking back at the rule book and finding that there isn't a goaltending rule, all for it, like, Defenders are being really, really creative, and I think it's up to the attack end to, to outsmart them and, and challenge them and fake the ball and move it around. And um, today, the Adelaide Thunderbirds pulled it out once but uh, didn't quite get there. So, um, yeah, we, we were much more switched onto it and, and definitely over overstood them from doing it again. So, yeah, all for it. And I think uh, the best part about it is netball's been the major out of this. People are talking about it, and netball have been on back pages of papers. So, it's been fantastic for the sport. Maddie, congratulations on the win and uh, great to see the Vixens right back up on top where they belong and uh, let's stay there. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yes, welcome back to Super Women Live, proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens Premier Partner, Jason Betting, helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. And I'll be uh, resting and recovering with uh, Jason Betting after that ripping win, 48-40 to yesterday, or today I should say, Against the Thunderbirds at High Sense Arena. Five double passes for the best SMSs. 0433 to give away to the Vixens home game against the Fever on the 20th of May. And uh, an SMS here too from uh, Matt in Dandong saying, Matty is awesome to watch. She's a pocket rocket. And uh, you can come along to the next Vixens home game there. Give us a call there. Matty 9429 
11 16. Uh, and the Melbourne Vixens have only one home game left for the season, too, against West Coast Fever uh, on uh, the 17th of June, it says there. So I think that would be it, uh, of course, because the 20th May has uh, been run and won. Uh, make sure you catch the Superwomen on home soil and uh, give them a huge send off before they head to New Zealand for the last two rounds. Purchase your tickets through Ticket Tech now to secure your spot in the action uh, so 9429 and sms 0433 we've heard from louise southby halbish of course the vixens assistant coach and also former gun diamond and madison brown the vixens vice captain and absolute star now let's hear from uh, this young lady Right now on Superwomen Live, we're joined by Casey Stanaway, who's a vixen, but also an absolute star too with the Victorian Fury in the Australian National League. How are you, Casey? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Very good. What a great win, too, for the vixens today. Uh, yeah, it was. Um, definitely good to get a win on the board. And uh, I think the second half, really, we showed how well we can play and the defensive pressure was great. So hopefully that can put us in to the next few games leading up after the bye. And Casey, of course, you've been training with the Vixens uh, after Car Richards' injury. How have you found that? Yeah, no, it's good. I, um, I've been on the reserve list, I think, for about three years now with Vixens. So sort of pop in and out as they need me and that sort of thing. So it's always good to train at that top level and get some exposure with them and um, experience, you know, the game so fast in ANZ level. So it's great. From memory, too, you got a bit of court time against the Tactics, I think, over there in New Zealand uh, as uh, wing defence uh, for the Vixens. Yes, no, I did. It was very exciting. So played, I think, just under a half down there. So I've never played in New Zealand. So it was, um, it was great to get on and get the opportunity to have a bit of a run around. How did you find uh, the touring side of it as well? Yeah, no, that's, it's always fun um, going on the road with the girls and we have a good time and, you know, the lights and the buses and everything like that we always seem to have a good time and all be together and rooming with your friends and yeah it's great it's always a lot of fun and you're an experienced midcourt player and uh you know had the, a bit of exposure now with with the vixens uh and but just on top of that obviously one of the original uh, two members i think of the victorian fury team since inception in the australian national league in 2008 how have you found that and you've been absolutely starring obviously yeah, um, Fury's a, a great program that um, the well the the league, the Australian Netball League. So we play at the end of the ANZ uh, league at the end of the competition. Sorry, the season. So we play different states um, around Australia, and uh, it's a pretty strong competition. Actually, it's a good stepping stone from. Obviously, I play state league here in Victoria, and then uh, that's just that a good little stepping stone between. Uh, AMZ and VNL, so really enjoying it. Um, tough. We we actually lost our first for the first year last year, so we're hoping to bounce back this year and regain our title that we held for a few years. Have you seen much of the lifting or the hoisting uh, down there in the Australian National League? <laughs> uh, has it been a hot topic there as well as, of course, in uh, the AMZ Championship? Uh, we haven't. We have. We obviously haven't started playing in our competition um, as yet, but. You know, it's the the hip thing at the moment, so we might uh, see. We might even try and get some of our, our girls to have a bit of a go. Don't know how they're. Maybe one of the other states. I think they actually tried it today. The Thunderbirds had a bit of a crack at it as well today, but they only did it once. I think with uh, Shimon in there. So it's obviously the talking point of the competition at the moment. Everyone's trying to have a bit of a go at it. So it'll be interesting to see if anyone pulls it out in A and L as well. What are your thoughts on it, actually, there, Casey? Oh, I was sort of, I was obviously on the bench and I was sitting next to Michaela Wilson and we were just in shock that she was able to do that and a couple of times she got two hands to the ball. Um, so, oh, a big game a couple of weeks ago. So, I don't know, I think it's quite good. It's, it, it makes the game a little bit more different. It's always great to see it changing and uh, developing in different ways. So, uh, yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a good thing given within the rules. So, I don't know whether a couple of times it was actually a fair uh, tip that she was getting, but if it's in, within the rules, then good on them. It's always good to yeah, develop the game in different ways. 
which had Nikesi Stanaway, of course, who's playing with the Vixens and uh, an absolute star too for the Victorian Fury in the Australian National League. When you were sitting uh, watching the game too, uh, live uh, at the game uh, for the Vixens today against the Thunderbirds, what were you thinking when they were down 22-16? Uh, to 16? Uh, Did you think they were always going to get the job done? Yeah, I think so. We had a really uh, good week at training. We sort of, we started off on Tuesday, uh, had a tough session Tuesday and then sort of, um, oh, sorry, Wednesday that was. And then Friday night we had a really positive, you know, the ball was flowing really nice through court. The defensive pressure was amazing. So I think that deep down we always knew that we could get there and the girls on court just showed they just lifted another a love another notch in that second half and um I think it was well deserved. I think it just had to capitalise on our turnovers and I think we did that in the second half. So it was just great watching it from the sidelines and the energy and that crowd that was there was phenomenal. So it was really good. Really good win. You seem to really love playing the Thunderbirds as well, uh the Vixens always get up for those games and uh seem to come out on the right end of it. Yeah, a bit of a rivalry there perhaps. Um I don't know. I think we just match up well against them and we anything that they throw at us, we always have a response. So I think that uh, it's a nice tradition and I think we're 8-2 and two or something like that or maybe even 9-2 and two with them now. So uh, we've got a very good uh, win-loss ratio against them. So I don't know, maybe we just match up well perhaps. Good, uh, good battle with them. Well, Casey, uh, we, we can't wait to see you out there for the Vixens uh, in the future many more times. But I just want to mention, too, a lot of the girls are telling me that your leadership on and off the court is just phenomenal and uh, also a phenomenal aerobic capacity. Oh, I don't know about that. I'll, I'll claim that. I'll take that. That's, uh, yeah, I'd love to. I think I need to, um, playing in centre, I think you need to have a pretty solid base. And um, obviously, now that I'm a little bit older now, I actually enjoy the running aspect of training and being fit and that sort of thing. So I think that's helped uh, develop that in my game. So uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to say that, but I'll, I'll claim it. Yeah, I was just going to mention as well, uh, obviously, you've, as you said, getting a bit older now, you've represented Victoria at under-17s, under-19s, under-21 levels, and also a member of the 2009 Victorian Netball League All-Stars team. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, represented Victoria for a while, I guess. I had two years at the AIS as well, so I sort of feel like I've done everything. So I think the next step will be playing ANZ permanently and getting a contract. That's sort of what I'm aspiring to and um, obviously keep what well, I'm keeping on working towards. So uh, hopefully in the not-too-distant future I can uh, get that on my resume as well. Well, yeah, as we said, it was magnificent to see the Vixens get the season back on track today and now right back up the top where we belong. Thanks very much for joining us, Casey. We can't wait to see you out there with them very, very soon and good luck in the future.